Good morning, everyone. I'm here to talk about you. What do you think your most important relationship is? Your family? Your friends? Your romantic partner? Yes, they're important, but no, that's not the answer. You are your most important relationship. Before giving them the love they deserve, you need to love yourself. I only recently realized this, and I want to talk about how I came to understand the importance of loving myself. Back in high school, I was such a voracious student. I had about 10 times the diligence I possess today. I, um, I pursued my studies, I ran a school club, I did volunteer work twice a week, I, um, I fulfilled my duties in class as, as a student all at the same time. And no one forced me to do, it, do this, but I did, and I was never at peace. I was like a hamster running on a wheel, because I was always striving for more, reaching higher, unaware of how tired I was getting. And that was what got me to this university. And I guess it turned out better than I expected because they say it's the best school in the country. But my life was not the same because I was friends with the elite. And they didn't seem like elites at first because we all drank a lot of alcohol together and we hung out and they skipped classes while I didn't as much. And it was a lot of fun. And I felt that I reached the highest point of my life up until then. And I felt that I was being rewarded from all the hard work. But it wasn't until summer break until when I felt that I, had, that I had reached the lowest point. After all the fun in my first semester, I became a tired hamster. A tired hamster that's friends with the elite. All my friends started to achieve things like they always had. They learned new languages. They went abroad, they learned new instruments or got even better at them. And there I was, a lazy, tired hamster. I felt that I was tumbling down a slope while everyone else was climbing up. And as always, I reached out to the people around me. My family, my friends, my romantic partner. And yes, they cared about me and they helped. But at the same time, they were living their own lives. And I needed to live my own. I was the only one who could fill the void in myself, and I needed to do what I needed to do. So one day, I was reading a book that I bought in an, in an attempt to fill my void called The Tribe of Mentors. And one of the mentors in the book said that he takes sabbaticals in his work life. And by the way, a sabbatical is a long rest. In this case, he took 18 months off work. And after reading this, I felt that I just decided to call the life I was living that summer a sabbatical. I needed to accept the fact that I, I needed a rest. And I was already taking a sabbatical, to be honest, because I was living such a lazy life in the summer. But I just wasn't embracing it because I had never lived like that. And it was so different from these summers, the past four summers that I lived. And it was so different from the summers that the people around me were living. So I decided to accept that I was a tired hamster and that I needed a rest. And this is what I did in the summer. So I tried to work out at the fitness center a few times, but a 15 minute walk from home was too far for me, so that did not work out. And so I decided to watch other people work out in, <laughs> on TV in the World Cup. And I was always staying up late at night to watch games between countries that were not related to me in any way, and this made me oversleep every single day. And I also documented the process, the healing process of my swollen hand that was tortured by mosquitoes. And I went to a rock festival for two days, which was the most exciting part of my whole summer. And I also mentored at a business camp for, at the College of Business Administration for a day, and that was it. My three-month summer vacation was over. And I had never spent a summer achieving nothing tangible. But mentally, I had never achieved more because I had finally accepted that, uh, I had finally
finally accepted myself for who I am even when I was doing nothing. I felt recharged, like I had new batteries. And most importantly, I learned a lesson. I am the one who cares about me the most. So I should care for myself the way I need and want. And where am I now? I'm just at the end of my second semester. I still haven't joined any school clubs, and I was more focused on academics and enjoying the small moments of my life. And I, to be honest, I know that I need to love myself, but I'm still figuring it all out, and I know that I will be for some time. And I know that sometimes I will question what I'm worth, and I might not find the answer so well, but I know that I will not de devalue myself for the things that are happening around me. And I want you to remember this too. You are the one who needs to care about yourself whenever you feel that the, people, that the support from the people around you isn't enough. And I also want you to remember that we are never tumbling down a slope. We are not racing to climb up first. We all have our own pace, and we are the ones that should be controlling it. Thank you so much for listening. Why do you believe people have trouble loving themselves? Does anyone have any opinion? 